Looks great, but are you feeling on time? All right, a little pressed, but... Because you've got to make that match that quality now? Yeah. It's like a simple part of the the face. Cool. This thing is taking forever. And I have the smallest tattoo. Tim better get done or he's in big trouble. He's so slow. Today, you must create a portrait tattoo. Remember, we're testing precision. If your tattoo doesn't look like the picture, you'll be packing. You have six hours to tattoo, and your time starts now. I love a bit of a change of plan. Okay, <laughs> okay, all right. I would love to rock a colored portrait. Okay. But if I do that, all right, like we're gonna get room to do ass. I do colored portraits all the time, but the judges all love black and gray more than color. This is $100,000, and I would feel a lot more comfortable if we were doing this in black and gray. So are you cool with this direction? I mean, I don't mind it in black and white. I don't. You can still capture him in it. Yes. I'm going to duplicate this photo down to the very stitch in her child's shirt. I am going to show the judges how precise I can be. Sarah. Kids can be tricky. There's not a whole lot of wrinkles and dimensions. It doesn't necessarily have to be wrinkles in order to add character. Honestly, I kind of like doing kid portraits. This tattoo is amazing. The face, you nailed his character, the likeness is totally there. I like how you went with the shadow underneath the chin, you went a little bit lighter. It kind of brings out the edge of the chin, which was a good call. It's awesome. You gave yourself the time to really make it nice. Very precise. Well, you guys wanted to see precision. Most people would have been lucky to pull off the face, but not very many people could have pulled off that shirt. It's a very good job. I love the hair because I love the dimension. I love the layers. It literally looks like you can see the kid's haircut. You definitely pulled it back together. It's nice to see people take a hard shot. This is definitely your best tattoo up here. Thank you, guys. In this group of four, there's a top two and a bottom two. Steve and Sarah, you guys are the top two. The judges have decided that the tattoo of the day goes to Sarah. Sarah, we all loved your tattoo. It's as good as portraits get. The shirt's amazing, the hair is amazing. Well done. You have six hours to give your canvas a realistic landmark tattoo that shows dimension. Your time starts now. I'm definitely feeling really confident going into this tattoo. Photorealism is one of my specialties. Go back just a little bit. There you go. I'm basically kicking some ass and showing the detail and the dimension. A lot of the people are like, oh, I can do photorealism. I don't think uh, half of them here really can do it. Joey. Man, this is a nice tattoo. A lot of the detail on this is suggestive, and that's what I like about it. A lot of little tricks in there to suggest all those beams without actually outlining every single beam. The darkness and the richness in this really gives you the sense of dimension. Great job, man. It's good to see somebody shine. The judges have decided that the best tattoo of the day goes to Joey. It's a beautiful tattoo. You really created a lot of depth and dimension with it. Congrats. Thank you. You have six hours to demonstrate precision by tattooing a portrait. And your time begins now. Let's do this, man. Let's get this going. Today, these artists really have to show precision because they have to really showcase the subtle details that make that person come alive to their friends and family. I think that's going to be the great. It's much tougher to go head to head doing the exact same photo because the weaknesses are completely obvious. I can't even remember the last time I did a portrait. Even though I don't do portraits on a daily basis, I know I'm going to be Jason. I've worked my ass off to be where I'm at. I am straight edge. I stay at home and I draw so that I can go in, kill it every time. I came to just do my best. Clean. You went head to head with Jason. You killed it on the details and the hat and the jacket and the emblems. The little highlights on the US symbols on his lapel is just great. For precision challenge, I think you nailed it. You even added a highlight to the tie. That isn't shown in the photo, which I really like because there's certain things you can make better in a portrait, and you did that. You excelled. It was just done nicely and sharp and meticulously. That's what wins this competition. 
wins the head-to-head -head competition between Clean and Jason? There's no mistaking the difference in the quality of how smooth and how nice Clean's is. Final decision. Clean. My pick is Clean. 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 The winner of the head-to-head -head competition is Clean. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, artists, you have six hours to face off tattooing against your teammate. One artist from each team will be eliminated. Your time begins now. All right, let's do this, man. Let's do it. Let's get this this one. Face-off situations create one of two things, complete success or total failure. Can I see that stencil? I'll just work through it, add all the texture I need. The battle royale begins. What do you think, Gia? My personal opinion would be to angle it down because it's more flattering on the I'm body. I'm kind of liking the way that it's placed. You know, don't but... change your plans. Both teams are doing animals for black and gray realism. Texture is abundant. Wet pupils, feathers, fur, teeth. Today would be a great day for somebody to really show off. I suggested tilting the head, because right now it's like falling back on the thigh. And he was like, mm, no. If you don't take advice from people that know what they're talking about, your tattoo is gonna suffer. Especially going up against me. I think Team Nunez picked black and gray animal portraits so I could not only beat Dave, but obliterate him. The majority of what I do is animal portrait work. Unless lightning strikes me, Dave's going home. Let's move on to Servan. Super strong, brilliant tattoo. You really got some areas of depth and you really got these creases. If you look into the eye, where the wrinkles close around the eye, the eye looks really inset. You pulled off some really, really nice technical things here. And the way that you were mindful of leaving that tiny little highlight on the upper lip before it joins to the bottom lip, those are really nice tricks. I think it's the best thing that you've shown us. I mean, you can picture rubbing your hand across this guy and feeling all the textures and creases in his skin. It just hits the challenge for me. It's killer. Dude. John, you don't do this and you came out swinging. And Servan, this is definitely the best tattoo you've produced. They're both strong. You get really close up on Servan's, you outshine him technically with the details and the smoothness of the shading. John's, it's very recognizable. And I think if you gave the layman out there in the world to pick which tattoo they'd want to have, chances are a lot of people would pick John's. Just in terms of shape and the way it is on the body, I kind of lean that way myself. My final decision, I like John's tattoo better. My choice is to send John home. Basing it on texture, I do believe that Servan won. John, my vote's for you to go home. The judges have decided, John, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. This is not a bad outing. It's just a pity that this is where you make the first outing. It's a tough one. Please pack your machines and close shop. Thank you. Dave and Nate, you tattooed black and gray realistic animals head to head. One of you will be packing your machines. Nate. This thing came out really dynamic. Your use of negative in here was really nice. These areas were without any lines at all. You still have the inference of these whisker type feathers going off the eyes and in front of the beak. If you look at the top of the head and you see those little negative spaces, it looks like you could brush your finger over the top of that and those would individually move every single time. That is top notch work. For you to be able to come in under pressure and knock this thing out of the park like this, I mean, I couldn't expect you would ever be in the bottom again. This actually is a tough challenge right here because you've got one guy that is obviously familiar with this style. You have another guy who never done this style. So he's fighting an upward battle. I need a final decision. Nate, this is a stunning tattoo, man. My choice is for Dave. Dave. The judges have decided, Dave, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Please pack your machines and close shop. This competition is about forming alliances with people. And if you don't form the right alliances with people, you get to do black and gray realism against Nate Beavers. That's why I'm going home. You have six hours to tattoo. If you fail, for you, this battle is over. And your time starts now. Let's get this thing started. We're testing composition by giving these artists color realistic battle scenes. But this is kind of what we're thinking. Beautiful. Cool, yay, awesome. There's many different elements that are occurring at once. There's movement, you have flesh, you have cloth, there's a foreground, and you have a background. And that all takes composition to execute. Do you want to do anything above it? 
Yeah, like we can do like a little trail here, detail these stuff in front of the boat. I'm definitely giving my input on this one. I'm making sure that DJ hears me. Looking good, DJ. If he listens to me and if I listen to him, I think we could pull this off. That's dope. Keep underestimating me while we keep winning. Old Town Inc. The composition is great. You see the foreground, you got a couple little images floating up close, the ship sitting nicely on the plane in the water, and then you have the horizon line in the back. It gives it depth. You've got a tiny little inference of these palm trees in the background to show that this is, in fact, Hawaii. You guys did a beautiful tattoo. You worked your asses off in six hours. There you go. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> OK, judges, it is time to announce tattoo of the day. There's no debate in my mind that it's Old Town. I don't think anybody else in the room gets close to hitting it. Congratulations, guys. Old Town Inc., best tattoo of the day. Just don't think so hard. No, I won't. Black and gray realistic tiger, it's one of the things I do the least. I think you'll do better if you think about it like color, because that's your Yeah. Don't try to add texture in a stripe if it's black. Anthony played a very strategic choice to set Gary up for the win and to really screw me and take me out of this thing. I'm here to not let you down today, my man. He played his cards really well, and I'm super nervous. Enjoy I this. I got faith. I got faith. You have six hours, and your time starts now. Awesome. Ready? Now we go. Yes. Gary versus Josh, if there's a fist fight to be had, these guys are the ones to do it. Dig it? Yeah. A realistic tiger can be very tricky because somebody has to know how to emulate different values of fur for the different values of stripes and colors in the tiger. You can give me that face done in two hours? I hope so. You have to be able to hit the textures of the mouth, precise with the whiskers, shiny with the eyes. This whiskers right here is just a hair higher than the picture. I might just fade that off anyway. All around, there's a lot to a realistic tiger. All right, lady, you ready? Yep. All right, brother. Go get him, dude. I am not going to leave Gary's side because this is probably one of the most important tattoos of his lifetime. He gets to take out one of the biggest players in the house. So I'm going to sit right here and make sure he does this thing the way it needs to be done. You don't have to lay that light of a line. They still want longevity, bro. Thanks, coach. Even though me and Josh butt heads, we need to put our differences aside. This is all pretty much one value, this yeah. weird yeah, t-shirt gonna... shape. Like almost... I want to texture it. Yeah, yeah. I've showed him a few tricks to get through this challenge. Hopefully he listens to me for once and actually applies them. Pay attention to your reference. Yeah. <laughs> Haven't seen you look at it once. I can't lose another artist, especially Josh. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it, machine's down, time is up. No more ink. Let's start with Josh. You do a beautiful tattoo here. You definitely captured the look of the tiger. I really like what you did on the hair coming out of the ears. And you really gave a strong swing at lining up all these whiskers and the backdrop of the fur against the whiskers. For me, the biggest letdown is going to be the eyes. Yeah, the one eye, she got to where she was moving, and I couldn't get her to sit still. And I think I just jogged it a little, and I had to overcorrect. Obviously, I'm looking at it, and the focal point for me, that went. Yeah. You show off quite a few different textures. You really hit the wetness of the bottom lip. The top teeth get a little bit away from you. Like the one tooth that's a little more standing on its own. Yours is a little different than the reference. In the stripes underneath the face, all that fur and all the little lines you put in each stripe to really show the direction of fur is amazing. I really just shot for something that literally looked like it could leap right off his skin. It is a beautiful tattoo, man. Thank you. Gary. I love the pose you chose. I love the image you chose. I particularly love the look you got in the tiger's eyes. Those eyes look beautiful and wet. Really great little attention to detail. Where I think you have challenges, your whiskers make new shapes. They look more electrifying. It doesn't have that slow, flowing, long, wispy feel to it. It's a little spider webby towards the edges. And one thing that would help this tattoo out a lot is if the top of the head was the top of the tattoo. Where you put the arch of the back, it rounds this whole thing off to a big ball shape. Same with underneath the cheek right here. If you would have left a little bit of breathability, that shape of that chin would have looked really strong. But you show us a really nice black and gray tattoo, solid black, multiple tones. Thank you very much. It is now time to determine who is going home. I have a hard time getting past the whiskers against that white fur. I don't know what the f I'm looking at. My vote's for Gary. 
These are two well-executed tattoos. Gary's does get a little more hard to read in the bottom half of the tattoo. I gotta vote for Gary. My vote's also for Gary. The judges have decided, Gary, you do not have what it takes to be Ink Master. Please pack your machines and close shop. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. I stood up and defended myself. I proved that I'm a well-rounded, good artist. I gave Josh a run for his money. I made him scared. It was one of the greatest experiences of my life. You have six hours to tattoo an animal portrait, and your time starts now. Looks great, but how are you feeling on time? All right, a little pressed, but... Because you've got to make that match that quality now. Yeah. That's a good simplify the hell out of the face. Cool. This thing is taking forever. And I have the smallest tattoo. Tim better get done or he's in big trouble. He's so slow. It was painful watching the goddamn stencil. He, he peels them off just as slow as he tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> Tim. It's gone. Smallest tattoo of the day, but man, you hit it right on the head. That dark black fur texture like that is really hard to pull off. You've got a lot of different tones in this tattoo. Solid black, a little bit lighter, all the way down to your softest grays. The details are amazing. Precision was key in this. You show a side of you that's probably really scary for the back line. This is what we're looking for here, someone who can do everything. Appreciate it, guys. TJ does a great job, no doubt, but I am personally leaning towards Tim. Both these guys really killed it. Tim really makes some smart choices on how to do that dark fur. My decision is Tim. What? TJ. I'm going with Tim. The judges have decided the best tattoo of the day goes to Tim. Yeah, I'm very shocked. Like... Would you like to explain to us why we're wrong? No. <laughs> You have six hours to tattoo a black and gray realistic U.S. landmark. And your time starts now. Lots of little details going on here. I wish it didn't have to hurt. I'm doing the Taos Pueblo. Bob told me it's a big rock formation, but turns out it's an entire town made out of adobe. It's like one of the most detailed tattoos I've ever done, I'm not gonna lie. Black and gray realism is my specialty. If I don't nail every single ledge and window and stair in this tattoo, I'll never hear the end of it. Angel. You took a smart approach to this tattoo because it is illustrated. You have a lot of smooth shading. You have areas that transition. All the negative in the face of these buildings shines so bright because you put the mountain behind it dark. You put the ground in front of it, medium tone. It's really legible. It's really clear. But this is a New Mexico Pueblo. Mm -hmm. That is a saguaro cactus. It only grows in Arizona. Oh, shit. <laughs> that is my bad. But overall, I think it's a very smart play on how to attack this. Thank you. <laughs> Kill it. Good job, Angel. Thank you. All right, judges, time to determine who had the best tattoo of the day. I really love what Angel did. When you see Angel's finished tattoo, where all the bells and whistles are on the whole landscape, it tells a better story and is a better all-around tattoo. Final decision. Final decision is Angel because Jarrell didn't finish his drawing. My vote is also for Angel. <sighs> cool. <laughs> the judges have decided that the best tattoo of the day goes to Angel. Thank you. 